Hello there and welcome to our program today to the conversation room. We're so excited to have you with us and also my guest Mike Hutchings. I'm so excited to have you with us today Mike and especially for the topic that we are going to open up to uh, our viewers um, this subject of trauma and being healed and delivered and set free from trauma and the effects of it because that's what our Lord wants to do. So welcome to the program. Patricia, thank you so much for having me on. It's such a joy. You have impacted my life in so many ways and we, we just cherish the relationship you have with Global Awakening, uh, friendship with Randy, you're part of us. And uh, what a privilege it is to be on with you today, my friend. Well, the feeling's mutual. And for those of you that are watching, uh, Randy Clark um, is not only one of my apostolic advisors, but he's a covering for me. I belong to his network and it is an amazing ministry. Uh, it is full of integrity and honor and doing the whole gospel. So we just love uh, Randy Clark, his ministry, and all of you that labor with him. He has such a quality team. And um, and you uh, you oversee the school, right, Mike? The, yes. the, the school of ministry. And you guys just, I tell you, raise up some of the most amazing leaders and you thrust them out. It's not just head knowledge, although there's some really good academic input, but a lot of spiritual impartation and input and also opportunity to go and do it, not just to sit back and get full of information, but to go and do it. So please check out uh, Randy Clark School of Ministry and uh, Mike Hutchings will give you more information on how you can get connected with Mike and his team if you need freedom from trauma. So anyways, we're just going to get right into this subject. Mike, one of the uh, first scriptures that the Lord gave me as a brand new believer, it was like, um, I got a Bible the first day I got born again, started reading it. And one of the first scriptures I opened up to was Isaiah 60 and Isaiah 61. So I've carried them in my heart forever. And I just want to read for our viewers um, Isaiah 61 because there's a promise here and it says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners and I'm just going to stop there because it's like Jesus when he came this is what his mandate was to destroy the works of the evil one and to set the captives free. And if you're feeling that you're a captive today to maybe trauma that you've experienced in the past, then I've got good news for you. Today is a day where you can be set free because that's what Jesus came for. And it's what Mike Hutchings has really embraced. And Mike, especially um, in your book, uh, Supernatural Freedom from the Captivity of Trauma. I highly recommend getting this book. It's, it's, it's amazing, Mike. Thank you for this awesome tool. It's, it's a very easy read, power packed. Um, you know, many people I know are getting healed as they read it, but it's got real practical tips for you in this book on even how to minister. You can minister to yourself and minister to others through this book. So I highly recommend getting it. You can get it on Mike's website, on Amazon. Um, it's uh, all all over, wherever you can buy books, you'll find that book, <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, so Mike, in the book, um, you of course uh, mention a lot about um, uh, PS uh, or PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and which is so prevalent today. We see it everywhere. People are suffering. I remember when my husband and I worked in the inner city of Honolulu, uh, there was a lot of Vietnam vets that were homeless on the street, addicted. But but what what had happened is they were so traumatized uh, for what they had seen in Vietnam, what they had experienced there, that um, you know they were just messed up and no one to reach out to them, right? And so a lot of times we think of um, PTSD. Um, in relationship to vets, or let's say, like uh, the 911 disaster, or those extreme disasters. 
but you have discovered that there can be huge impact of PTSD with, with other things as well. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder is a diagnosis that was created uh, actually in uh, help with psychiatrists seeking to help Vietnam veterans. Um, it's something uh, that I, I use the broader definition. We've already talked about it. Trauma. That is, uh, first of all, Pat Patricia, everybody needs to know that everybody has some kind of trauma in their life. Everybody does. We live in a very broken, uh, traumatic world. And so much of what the Bible reveals is man apart from God. And in the midst of that brokenness of relationship comes a brokenness of life. So trauma is, is the broader definition of what is clinically known as PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. And what you have to understand is that everybody can have some kind of unresolved or unhealed trauma that affects the way you think, the way you feel, how you make choices, it affects your identity, and it literally becomes a frame around the portrait of your life uh, that causes you to think that the, the truest thing about you is that you've been traumatized, which is why I, I love that you started with Isaiah 61, because that's the, the ministry of Jesus. And the first thing he says, I've come to bring good news to the afflicted, to the poor, to the traumatized, to the victimized, to the marginalized. And then the very first sign and wonder of the good news, he says, is I've come to heal the brokenhearted. You know, we, you and I both know, Patricia, that there's really two things that can break the soul of, the, of man, break the heart. That's what that scripture is talking about, the soul of, of human beings. One is sin. It's iniquity, transgression. It's those things that we do uh, against God and apart from God. But the second thing that breaks the heart is trauma. And trauma are those events that have happened to us, that overwhelm us, that they, they seek to destroy the dream of God for our lives. And it can not only be something horrendous like a war, you know, warfare trauma or disaster trauma or being involved in earthquakes, tornado, hurricanes, but it can also be the trauma of child abuse. Um, sexual, physical, emotional, childhood abuse, domestic abuse, even church abuse and church trauma. All of this is part of it. And, and people say, well, you know, you just need to get over it. Well, I'm telling you, there's no getting over a shattered soul, which is exactly what right. broken heart means. It means to have a shattered soul that every part of who you believe that you are is shattered because of the things that have happened to you or the way people have treated you. So when I talk about this, yeah, I do talk about PTSD, but I also, to try to get it out of the box of just being a military thing or a first responder thing, I like to talk about the trauma that we all suffer. Yeah. And a lot of times I think, Mike, that people compare their trauma to someone else's trauma. And so they might think, well, yeah, I was traumatized by my father leaving me when I was five years old. Um, but that's nothing compared to um, someone, you know, uh, that's faced war or, you know, was filled full of bullets or whatever. And we cannot compare because God looks at you. And I, I feel like I'm speaking to someone right now. God looks at you and he loves you so much and he cares about the things that have traumatized you. He cares about you if, you're, if your father left you when you were young or your school teacher rebuked you in front of the class. And you might think, well, that was just really nothing compared to what a lot of people go through. But to you, it broke your soul. It, 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 it shattered something in you. It shattered your peace or your identity, right? And sometimes it can be um, things that we just kind of brush off that once they're healed, we, we, we just find new freedom. And that's what I love um, about your book, Mike, the way that you lay it out. I even like the way that you talk about the different parts of the brain and how the, the, the physical brain reacts to trauma and um, the neurological um, aspect of it, I, I find fascinating. And also just to give our viewers a lot of hope, you give an example in the book, and I forget the name of it, but um, it's, it, it's an Indian craft 
where they will take the broken pieces of a of a vessel and then put it all back together again with I think it was gold or silver or yeah, platinum or gold, or gold lap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. It's all kintsugi or kintsukuroi. And when a vase or a piece of pottery is broken, instead of throwing it away like we do in our Western culture, they consider that thing still valuable. So they take the pieces and they put it back together in its original design that was originally designed by the creator. But then they take gold or silver lacquer to put the pieces back together so that when it comes back into its original shape and form, it's actually more beautiful and more valuable, even though it's been broken at one time. It's, it's a powerful picture of what yes. Jesus does for our shattered souls. I was moved to tears when I read that. And I thought, wow, that's exactly what you do. When I look back at my own life, I came to the Lord very shattered. I mean, I was a mess right and a lot of times you look at your own mess and you think oh man this this looks pretty hopeless and you feel pretty helpless in the midst of it but when i look at what the lord's done he just he just put everything back together and exactly like what you said he makes you more beautiful and more lovely than what you could have ever ever known or ever imagined and i believe that's a word for someone that's watching right now you are so beautiful and even in your mess, as you look at the broken pieces, I remember the Lord speaking to me years ago as a young believer, and I felt so broken. And he said, even, even if you are broken into all these little pieces, can you trust me to hold those pieces together in the palm of my hand? And I think that that's what he's saying to you, because he's going to remake you. He's going to put all of it back together. He's going to bind up the broken pieces of your heart. And there is going to be a lacquer of gold, of silver, of platinum, of preciousness that makes you even more beautiful, more valuable than you could ever dream of. And I believe this is really touching someone here right now. So just, just receive that. Receive the drenching of the Lord's uh, love. Patricia, if Thank I could, I want, I, want yeah. to, I want to address the comparing of trauma. You have to remember mm -hmm. that the root word of trauma is the word wound. So the only time that the word trauma appears in the New Testament is in the parable of the Good Samaritan. When the man who was beaten by robbers was seen by the Samaritan as, as a being traumatized, or tra the word literally is traumatizo, or wounded. And he picked up the man and he began to treat his traumas, or his wounds, his trauma. And so when you think of the word trauma, rather than a mental illness, a mental disorder, or a mental disease, if you think about it as a soul injury, that you've received a wound. And to try to compare one trauma with another trauma is not helpful for anybody because you don't know what, for instance, to that three-year-old, whatever that was that happened between them and their parent and their teacher, you don't know how that shattered that little soul right then. But understand that it's a wound. And no matter, no matter how great or big or what caused the wound, it's still a wound that needs to be healed by God. And there needs to be a putting back together of that shattered soul that took place. So we in our Western culture, unfortunately, Patricia, we have a tendency to tell people, well, once you've been hurt or wounded, you just need to get over it, just need to move on. And so we stuff everything down. We, we deny it. We try to put it in this box. Well, eventually, those things come out and they come out in behaviors, they come out in, in depression, they come out in anxiety in lots of different ways. And Jesus is about getting into those boxes and bringing healing and freedom. We don't have to be afraid of allowing Jesus to get in there to our most painful moments of life because he brings healing and restoration and freedom. And I'm, there's somebody here right now that you are, that you're getting so triggered right now, but what we're talking about it's because you're so afraid that if you allow that place to be opened again, that somehow it's going to bring even worse pain. But I'm telling you that if Jesus goes with you, he is the one that not only will bring healing, but he will erase all of that and he will bring freedom so that you're no longer defined by that horrible thing that happened to you. Oh, that's so beautiful. Right on. I remember... Mike, when I was um, a fairly new Christian, because when I got born again, I had a very 
dramatic salvation experience. And I was in this euphoria, like I was just like, wow, you know, I had no pain, my pain left, everything went, it was just like so beautiful. And one day I was praying and the Lord gave me a vision and it was um, a garbage can that was in my heart. And every time I was hurt or wounded, I would put it inside the garbage can and put the lid on very, very tight. And the Lord spoke to me that day and he said, I want to start freeing you from the garbage that's hurt you. And I said, no, 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 just leave it. Just leave it as it is. It's just fine. And he said, the problem with leaving garbage is it gets very stinky. <laughs> and eventually the, the odor of it, it spreads where you don't want it to go. And he said, but if you trust me, I, I won't do it all at once. I'll just do it gently. And will, will you give me permission? And I remember giving him permission and trusting him. And then over the next two years, it wasn't overnight. It was like every once in a while, I'd be in a, in, in a state where something would surface and then he would minister to it. And then I'd say, I want more, I want more. And he said, let me just do it in my timing. Yes. And I think that's important too, <laughs> that we have to let the Lord do it in his timing. But over a two year period, it was just so beautiful, the healing that he did. But I think it's ongoing, like, yeah, you know, um, we're, you know, always can be open for the healing of the Lord, because in our lifetime, we can be wounded, you know, it doesn't matter how long you've known the Lord or how long you've lived, you can still be wounded. So those wounds are worthy, worthy to be healed. You know, Mike, interesting. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 11, the Apostle Paul goes through this litany of all of the ways that he suffered for the gospel. You know, I believe that Paul had post-traumatic stress disorder. I do. Yeah, because right. look, I mean, he died a couple yeah, of times, really. he was beaten, everything like that. But then he he came to the place that he trusted God with the with that grace. I, I want to say this to everybody. You're still going to experience some kind of trauma in life, particularly if you follow Jesus, because you're going to be persecuted. You're going to deal with rejection of people. The question is not whether you're going to be traumatized again. The question is, what do you do with it? And this is yeah. where we have an amazing Savior who is willing to take all of our wounding and, and, and we can roll it over to him every night. The other piece, my one of my mentors is Jack Hayford. Jack Hayford would talk about the Holy Spirit, that he was the great psychiatrist, that he would put his finger on one place that he wanted to deal with, and that he would keep it there until we got let let the Holy Spirit deal with it. I don't like to talk about us being onions. You know, we talk, you hear a lot of people talking about, oh, we're onions, we got to peel back layers. No, it's the Holy Spirit putting his finger on the right thing at the right time for us to deal with it and to move on. So, so you don't have to be introspective to try to figure out what's wrong with us. I let the Holy Spirit tells me, tell me what's wrong yeah. with me and I'm going to be okay. So uh, it's a wonderful process. I'm still being healed. Um, we're all still being healed and uh, we will continue to be healed, but he's a wonderful counselor, amazing comforter, and he really sets us free. And as we understand that, uh, you know, there's a, a process of healing throughout our life because there's going to be fresh wounding in that. We don't want to navel gaze or, you know, right. look inside. I love what you said about you let the Holy Spirit bring it to you, put his finger on it because he knows exactly what to do. And some things um, I remember when I was nursing, I had a, I, I was um, a nurse before um, I went into full-time ministry. Um, but in the emergency ward, we would have um, children come in sometimes who had um, ingested poison, okay? And so some poisons, you would want to bring them back out of their system and others you didn't. So like, for example, if they swallowed Drano, you don't want them to bring it back out because if you did, it would it not only burn them coming down, but it would burn them again going back out. And so we need to really trust Holy Spirit. He's the all wise God. And even not, you know, get into, well, we'll do this or we'll do this or we'll do this to get our healing. Because I love what you said. We let the Holy Spirit 
show us. And um, a colleague of yours and a great friend of mine, Ruth Hendrickson, who uh, teaches Mashan, has also a team of people who minister in emotional healing, deliverance, freedom from trauma. Um, she is exactly the same as you. Just, you know, as wonderful being in a session, because I've been in sessions myself with her, with that same um, dynamic of just, let, let's just wait for Holy Spirit yes. to reveal it to us. And I love that. But in your book, Mike, you um, list and explain so beautifully a number of the different symptoms that trauma can bring and even effects of it that are surprising, I think, to some people. Even, even some of the uh, physical manifestations of trauma, I think a lot of people might be wanting to treat things physically where really there's um, a, a, an emotional wounding or soul wounding as the root of it. So when you carry unresolved trauma, whether it's diagnosed as PTSD or not, some of the symptoms of that can be, first of all, and this is primary across the board, whether you're able to experience a good night's sleep. Most of the people who only are able to sleep two to three hours a night, I would guarantee you that they have some kind of unresolved trauma. Then on top of that, if they have nightmares, night terrors, or they experience things like night sweats, restless leg syndrome, things like that, those are all uh, a symptom of post-traumatic stress. So uh, um, trauma upsets the entire sleep center and sleep cycle. Number two, if you uh, get flashbacks uh, or have nightmares about a traumatic event that happened to you, if you get triggered by something you see, smell, taste, touch, or feel, uh, that's unresolved trauma that, that needs to be healed. If you deal with panic, anxiety, uh, or depression, many times that can be as a result of unresolved trauma that has taken place. Also, if you uh, rage, if, if, some, if you're very irritable and people have to walk on eggshells around you and you, you just kind of rage for, for no reason, that is a significant symptom of unresolved trauma. I had a man who was, in, who was a pastor at, at a large church. He was a, a pastor of small groups, wonderful man, but he was in a car accident that they literally had to pull him out with the jaws of life. And he had mm -hmm. had a little bit of a concussion, but for the next couple of months, he would rage at any little thing, a plate dropping or things like that. And his family was really concerned that he was going crazy. Well, he had just been traumatized with his car accidents. And once we prayed for him, there was no more rage, no more anger, no more irritability any longer. The feeling of hopelessness, the feeling that I'll never change, I'll always be the same, that can be part of unresolved trauma. Also, uh, suicidal ideation, any kind of suicidal thoughts that you might be having, or, you know, it's just time to end my life because nothing will ever get better. Those, uh, by the way, suicidal thoughts come from a demon. They don't come from the human soul. They're from a demonic realm that seeks to steal, kill, and destroy the dream of God for your life. If you want to isolate yourself a lot, you're afraid of being involved in any kind of crowds or being out with people. Isolation is a big symptom of unresolved trauma. Also, uh, if you have difficulty sitting with your back towards a door in a public place, if you feel very like on alert when you're out in a crowd, those are all part of uh, unresolved trauma as well. And then the physical effects can be uh, chronic nerve pain. If you have whether fibromyalgia or neuralgia or some kind of generalized chronic nerve pain, that can come from unresolved trauma because what takes place is the, the traumatic memories in your mind can actually set up a fight or flight response, which is governed by this little gland in your brain called the amygdala. And that sends signals down to your adrenal glands that pours out adrenaline and cortisol, which is the stress hormone. And when you are on overload for the stress hormone, it actually inflames your nervous system, which is why you have chronic nerve pain. Also digestive issues, um, memory issues can all be a result from unresolved trauma as well. So that's just some of the both the symptoms as well as the physical effects that can take place from unresolved trauma. 
Wow. And you've got so many um, testimonies of people who have been set free from physical ailments when the trauma is addressed. You share in your book even about fibromyalgia, which is something I think a lot of people suffer with today. And um, they're kind of at the mercy of, of their um, uh, medical team that doesn't actually know really what to do with it, except maybe treat the symptoms. But you share, share um, a testimony of that in your book that it was very encouraging. Well, one of my, my favorite testimonies of, I was at the Charismatic National United Methodist Conference a few years ago, and at the end of my message, they brought a, a pastor up to me, uh, a wonderful woman pastor who was in a wheelchair, and she was suffering from such debilitating fibromyalgia that she could not stand up and she could not walk on her own. And as, as we've learned, we always ask, well, how long has this chronic nerve pain been with you? And once they give us like five years, if they, if they say that's how long we've had it, then you ask the question, well, was there a traumatic event that took place more than five years ago? And she revealed to us as she began to weep that she lost three of her grandchildren in a single car accident. And as we began to minister to that and get, got her set free from that trauma, all of a sudden she began to feel electricity go through her entire body, just like rolling up and down from her feet all the way up to her, to her shoulders. And after probably about 30 minutes, Patricia, she said to me, you know, I, I don't ever lift people up out of wheelchairs. We, we don't practice that. But she says, move my foot paddles. And she, she began to feel strength coming into her body. And so they removed the foot paddles from her wheelchair. She stood up and she began to walk with no pain whatsoever. Eventually she walked and got so strong that she was able to run around the auditorium completely set free <laughs> because she was able to release the trauma and get healed of that trauma completely set free of all fibromyalgia and chronic nerve pain wow that's what our lord can do for you if you're watching right now and you're suffering in any way our god can set you free jesus can set you free and maybe you're watching and you don't know jesus yet Maybe he's not your savior. Maybe he's not your Lord yet. Maybe he's not your healer yet, your deliverer. But we're going to introduce you to him because a miracle can take place for you today. Um, I have a very good friend, Joan Hunter. Who um, I love Joan. She's you know, amazing. she's she's like a trauma a trauma deliverance queen. <laughs> and she I is. remember one time when uh, she was in. Our, our area, this was a number of years ago, it was just so amazing. She said, anyone with fibromyalgia come forward. I couldn't believe it, Mike, I could not believe it. I mean, we were a group of only about maybe 300 people. And about 1820 people came forward with that one, one infirmity. And uh, they were all sharing how long they had had it, just like you mentioned. Um, and some of them a long time. And um, she went down and on every single one of them identified trauma on every single one, hundred percent. And then she broke the power of trauma and their pain left a hundred percent healing yeah. for yeah. every single person. And they were, some of them running around, like you were saying, and they were crying because the pain had left. And this is what our God can do. This is, this is Jesus. This is what he came to do. And, um, Mike, well, I'm me, so I, thankful. Yeah, you told me ahead. to give you a word of knowledge. Right now, there's a number in your audience that have mm -hmm. really been wounded in church. You've mm -hmm. been wounded by manipulative, abusive leaders who cursed you and literally ran you out. And it's hard for you to put faith in Jesus again, because you have equated Jesus with that abusive, controlling church. And I want to say to you, that's not Jesus. Jesus not, is not abusive. He's not controlling. It's hard for you to even respond to the invitation to welcome Jesus, you know, to, to take control of your life again, because you're so wounded. And I'm saying to you, the wound that you suffered 
in that church was not Jesus. It was part of the plan of the enemy. Yes, the enemy is in churches many times mm -hmm. to steal, kill, and destroy the dream of God for your life. And if you'll accept the invitation from Patricia to just welcome Jesus to fully have lordship over your life again, you will find freedom and healing and release from that wound. You'll never have to go into a situation again where you've been so abused and hurt by church leadership like you were. There is freedom for you today in Jesus' name. Oh, man, I can feel that. We want you to respond as well as you're being touched by the Lord right now. Just um, let us know that that word really that you witnessed with that word that it was for you you can just say that was for me you know something simple like that in the comment section but I do want to move forward into something here right now because I just feel the draw of the spirit on so many of you I feel the compassion of the Lord for so many of you and all that you've been through I see someone that um, really had a trauma concerning a financial issue where um, you lost uh, savings, you lost what you had, and it, it, it's traumatized you, and it's never been the same since you've been dealing with depression, and even, um, I'm not sure if it's suicide, but it's the desire to die, and, um, and, and I see that, and someone else, uh, your husband left you, and when he did, it just shook you to the core. Uh, someone else, um, you found out that your husband uh, was bisexual and was in a homosexual affair. I'm, I'm just getting, I mean, it's just coming like popcorn right now. And Mike, if you're getting any uh, words of knowledge, just come in on this because I feel like God's ready to just want, wanting to do a healing, a deep healing in so many of you because that trauma of these situations is real. And God wants to God wants to heal. He wants to put his finger on that today and just set you free. It's what he came to do. There are women and men in this broadcast right now who have been sexually violated. Yeah. You were abused. You were, uh, you were groomed by older people. And then you were abused by both men and women sexually. You've never told anyone else about it, but you carry such shame and guilt thinking that it was your fault. And I, that the good news for you today is it was not your fault. You were a victim. You were, it is part of the enemy's plan to steal, kill, and destroy the dream of God for your life. And there's Jesus, when he looks at you, he doesn't see anything shameful about you. He doesn't see anything guilt that you carry guilt, but he sees you broken. He, and he wants to bring healing and restoration and sever the connection between you and all the people that have violated you sexually and abused you sexually. There's some who've had multiple sexual violations by different people and you feel connected to all those folks. And that's that soul tie, that connection that happens. And Jesus is here today to sever those, to say, you no longer have to be connected to those things. And the demons that were on those people can, will, the door of access will be closed so that you'll no longer yeah. have to be tormented by those things any longer in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I see someone also that um, you've been in a prison, an emotional prison, um, because there was a spiritual leader who really reached out to you and affirmed you and, and you were needing that because you had a broken childhood. And they kept reaching out and affirming you, and then put you in a position where you were to serve them in ways and it has sexual connotation here that was not right. It was not right. good. But the way it happened was so gradual and you just didn't know what to do. But they told you you couldn't tell anyone. It was it was your secret. And they even gave you a warning and they used their position as a man of God to seal your lips. And so you've been in this prison knowing that there's a secret but it's affecting you. It's affecting relationships you have. It's affecting the quality of your life and your health. And God wants to set you free. And I'll just put this in right now. If you need to reach out to us, um, go to voiceforvictims.life. Uh, voice, the number four victims.life. And we've got help for you there. We've got a whole network of people who can help 
um, bring you through this uh, trauma. We've got people who can intercede for you, people who will listen to your story and, and uh, give you the resource that you need. But Mike, can you just pray right now for our viewers um, as you're all maybe looking at your life right now and the Holy Spirit's pointing out an area that you need uh, freedom from. One of the key scriptures in Mike's book is Psalm 34, 18. And it, it, it's David was very acquainted with this. He said, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And that's what he is hovering over you uh, doing right now. So Mike, could you pray for the healing of the soul? It would be my privilege. If you carry any, now I want you, everybody to look at me. Keep your eyes open. Let's, I, I, when I pray for people with trauma, I ask them to look at me because the spirit of the Lord connects us together through our eyes. And in Jesus name, I want to say to you that whether you carry shame, which says there's something bad about me, that's what happened to me. Whether you carry guilt that you did something bad and that's why you were punished with trauma or whether you carry condemnation, which says I'm hopeless. I'll never change. All of those are lies from the enemy. None of that is true about you in Jesus' name. And Jesus has come. He took on your shame. He took on your guilt. He broke the power of condemnation. And Paul declares, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So, Father, I thank you for every one of my friends that are on this broadcast right now. Thank you, Father, thank you, that Father. you have arranged this divine moment for your grace to penetrate the darkness of their trauma, their hopelessness, and their despair in the name of Jesus. I say to you that as you welcome the work of Jesus Christ on the cross for your sin and iniquity, that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all of that sin, iniquity, and transgression, every blockage between you and God is torn down because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And because Jesus bore trauma on his own back, it says in Isaiah 53, 5, by his scourging, we are healed. Jesus took the 39 stripes on his back so that he could take all of the trauma of your life upon himself and bring healing and restoration and freedom to you in Jesus' name. So by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, I sever and I cancel every assignment of the evil powers of darkness against you. I specifically speak to the spirit of trauma to the spirit of torment, and to the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. And we bind those spirits and cast them away from you in Jesus' name and declare to you, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And you have a sound mind because you have the mind of Christ. And in the name of Jesus, I break the power and cancel the assignment of the spirit of suicide, the spirit of death, and the spirit... Yeah of lust and perversion in the name of Jesus. And we sever that from you right now in Jesus' name, severing every soul tie between you and any person who sexually violated you or abused you in any way so that you're no longer connected to them any longer in the name of Jesus. And we close the door of access of all this demonic torment. We say no more torment for you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I pray you would come and bring healing to their souls, that God, as their souls have been shattered by this trauma, that you would bring healing to their minds, to their wills, to their emotions, and Holy Spirit, that you would restore their identity back to the original design that you created them for. And I speak specifically to the traumatic images and memories that still torment you. And in the name of Jesus, I command these traumatic images and memories to dry up and die in Jesus' name. I sever the neural pathway that leads to them, and I sever your five senses, your seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, hearing, from being triggers to those traumatic images and memories. And I ask Holy Spirit, just pray this with me now. Holy Spirit, come and fill every area of my life that has been occupied by trauma. Fill my mind. Fill, fill my emotions. Fill my body with the power of your Holy Spirit and restore me back to your original design. I declare 
I am no longer defined by my history. I am no longer defined by my history. By what was done to me. By what was done to me. What I have done. What I have done. Or what I have witnessed. Or what I have witnessed. I declare. I declare. I am defined. I am defined. By who you call me. By who you call me. I am your beloved child. In whom you were well pleased. In whom you were well pleased. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Lord. If if you received that healing, that touch from the Lord, just write in the comments section. I received healing. I received this. We'd love to hear from you as to what God was doing in your life. That would be so beautiful. And for those of you that are watching that you don't know Jesus yet as your savior. There is only one name under heaven by which man can be saved. One. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And 2,000 years ago, Jesus took your place and absorbed all your sin, all your bondage, everything that separated you from your creator. He took upon himself on that cross and he died for you to give you absolute forgiveness and freedom. He paid the price. He paid the penalty for everything. All you have to do is receive him. Turn away from all the ways that have already destroyed you and just turn to him and receive him. And when he comes in, when you invite him into your heart, a miracle takes place and it's called being born again. He gives you a brand new life. It's an eternal life, a life that will go on way beyond is for all eternity. After you finish walking on this earth, you have this connection with God for all eternity, now and then forever. And there's only one way that you can have that, that cleansing. It's not what you do. It's not about your behavior. It's not about your efforts. It's about what he did for you. When he died on that cross, he looked at you. His eyes looked all the way through time. And he saw you right where you're at. And he says, I love you with an everlasting love. I forgive you. And I want you as my own. And if you would like to receive Jesus as your savior right now and have this brand new life, or maybe you've been away from Jesus for a long time or because you've been hurt and you want to come back, you know, you've been wayward for a while. You want to come back today. I want you to write in the comment section, I need Jesus. Would you do that? You want to receive Jesus as your savior today. You want to make sure that you are secured and, and reconciled to the father. There's only one way. It's through Jesus. His name is so powerful. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord. A day is going to be revealed where everyone will know that, yes, this is true. It wasn't Buddha. It wasn't a Hindu God. It wasn't this or that or the other. It was Jesus who is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the only Savior, the God of all gods. So write in your comment section, I need Jesus, because I'm going to pray for you now. And I want you to repeat after me in prayer. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe, I believe that, you that you died on the cross for me. On the cross for me. I believe yes. that you have forgiven my sins you have forgiven and that you came, that you came to give me you gave eternal, life. eternal life. I turn away from my old ways and turn to you. I invite you I invite to come you. into my heart into my now. Life. To be my Savior be my and Savior. my Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, he didn't hesitate. He came in. Right. Whether you feel him or not, he came in. He doesn't hesitate. You think, oh, I've been waiting for this moment because I love you. And I and I, I, I want to be. Whoops. I don't know. Well, that happened. I turned my ringer off before. He wants you. He wants you yes. to be with him for all eternity. And that's what happened right now. That miracle took place. Now, if you receive Jesus Christ as your savior today, I want you to write me. Write this 
address, very easy to remember, right? Jesus at patriciaking.com. And I want to welcome you to the family of God. We have some material to give you. We'll pray with you further. And also there's a website that with some Bible studies on it for brand new believers like yourself. And it's uh, findingjesus.me. Okay. And it'll share with you how to get filled with the Holy Spirit, how to pray, how to, how to walk with God. Uh, there's lots of wonderful little teachings there for you so that you can really get strong as a new believer. I want to remind you as we're closing the program today to get this book. It is so good. Supernatural Freedom from the Captivity of Trauma. It'll help you become unbroken, right? You'll be bound up by his love. And also uh, would love to have our audience get in touch with you and your team there. Um, Mike, how, how can they get in touch with you? So we have a website called GodHealsPTSD.com. And if they write uh, on email, GodHealsPTSD at Gmail. Dot com. That's God heals PTSD at gmail.com and put their request in a member of my team will be reaching out to them. Also, they can go to my Facebook page, God heals PTSD. And if they'd like to hear some of my teachings, go to YouTube and look up Mike Hutchings comma PTSD. And you'll see a number of my teachings there where I get a, a broader understanding of trauma and uh, God's provision for it. Well, well, thank you so much, Mike, for being with us today and and uh, for just loving God like you do and loving his people like you do. And, you know, we just celebrate um, all the ways that you have been setting captives free. And um, we're very, very grateful for you. So thank you. And um, for uh, those that are interested um, maybe in getting um, a class soon, uh, my good friend uh, Ruth Hendrickson is going to be teaching the Masha out here in Maricopa, but it'll be online as well. And you can register for that course. That's coming up uh, the first part of February, and it's a great uh, teaching program. And you can go to patriciaking.com. <laughs> and uh, I know she brags on you all the time, Mike. She just loves you. And I brag um, on her and, too. So anyway, there's yeah, it's just wonderful the, how God's raising up these beautiful leaders to train and equip the body because not only can you be healed, but you need to be used as an instrument of healing for others. We all um, have this ability to help others come free. So you can go to patriciaking.com and find out more information about that. It's coming up soon. And uh, thank you so much for joining us on today's program. Thank you, Mike, for being our guest today. And uh, yeah, we just want you all to know the love of Jesus in greater ways. So um, shine on in him and we'll see you next time. <laughs>